How you doing guys? Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Ignato and you're watching my YouTube channel. So, thank you. Anyhow, I'm going to be talking to you about vernal pools. You might be able to hear some American toads in the background, uh, which is pretty awesome, but that's not what I'm here for today. Uh, this is going to be a bunch of clips about vernal pools. Vernal pools are bodies of water that are temporary, usually filled up by rainwater or snow melt, and uh, they dry up through a fair portion of the year. But a lot of obligate species that can only be found in vernal pools depend on them. Certain species of salamanders and frogs, even micro macro invertebrates, okay, and plants. There's a lot of things that you can only find in vernal pools. And vernal pools are really important because they don't usually have fish in them. There are a couple of fish species that are found in them, but that's in the tropics. So, um, you know, they don't have to worry about fish feeding on the eggs and stuff like that, a lot of these creatures. So, Hope you enjoy this video. It's kind of a long one because I'll talk about some of the different types of vernal pools and some of the different things you can find in them. So come along for the ride. Hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started. Okay guys, this is a good example of an open canopy vernal pool. We've got trees on one side of the pool and a big clearing on the other side of the pool. And it's pretty much the southern side of the pool so it allows lots of sunlight to come in and penetrate the water allowing for lots of plant vegetation growth within the pool itself. We've got grasses, a lot of algae, we've got bladder wart, a little bit of duckweed, and all sorts of stuff like that. That provides food and cover for a lot of the creatures, micro and macro life within the pool itself, okay? In fact, some plant species can only be found in vernal pools. Very obligate species right there. Now, when this pool dries up, which will be sometime in July, this pool dries up every year. Um, you'll have this big patch of luscious dark green vegetation, very vibrant, okay? But in the mud underneath that, you'll have the eggs from this year's cyclops and daphneus and things like that, perhaps even fairy shrimp and stuff, awaiting next year's rain and snow melt and sunlight to give it a new spurt of life. This is a really fun pool because I filmed my very first YouTube video here, which was a, a wood frog documentary, very long. And uh, I did it right here. Really fun stuff. So uh, let's have a closer look and, and see what we've got. Okay, guys? As you know from looking at a lot of my videos, I've got vernal pools and all the stuff. My wood frog videos in a vernal pool, my spring peepers, my gray tree frogs, my spotted salamanders. A lot of those herping videos I do are at vernal pools. And in the spring, that's where all the life is, okay? Now, vernal pools are really neat because what they are is they're temporary pools. They have to be filled with water at least two or three months out of the year. And that water generally comes from rain or snow melt, especially if you're in the Northeast, okay? And the, the important thing about vernal pools is there are obligate species that can only be found in vernal pools like the spotted salamander, that's where they breed. The wood frogs, spring peepers, uh, marbled salamanders, and things like that, okay? If this was a pond or something, it could have fish in it. But vernal pools don't have fish because they dry up, right? And that keeps the voracious predators away. Because if there's fish in there, they're gonna eat all the tadpoles and polywogs, all those frog and amphibian eggs. They'll just eat them all. So that's why the vernal pools are, are crucial environments for these amphibians to breed in. And it's the only place you can find these amphibians breeding, some of them, okay? And the food within these things does provide, you know, the stuff living within them does provide food for birds, snakes, turtles, all sorts of things, okay? But it's also, like I said, a very important breeding ground. Now, some of these vernal pools, there's a ton of different types of vernal pools. Different states have different types of vernal pools. California has some vernal pools that can only be found in California, you know? And then New England is really famous for vernal pools, although land development and develop, you know, house developments and things like that is really encroaching on these vernal pools and putting them into an endangered situation. Without our vernal pools, we're going to lose a lot of species, and a lot of those species will feed on mosquitoes and things like that and let you know the health of an ecosystem. Okay, spring peepers generally live in safe, clean water. Now there's a lot of things that you can find in both vernal pools and ponds and sometimes even lakes and whatnot. 
things like the water scorpions, diving beetles, water striders, water spiders, Daphnia, cyclops, all that kind of stuff. But again, there's still things that are only found in the vernal pools, like fairy shrimp. Fairy shrimp will show up sometimes in a puddle, you know, when the, when the water rises a couple of inches and the sunlight hits it for several hours and the conditions are just right. These water, or these fairy shrimp, will hatch from their eggs and just totally bloom into life. You'll have thousands of them throughout the pool. They might only be alive for 10 days and then they just disappear. They die off and those eggs can wait around for sometimes decades for the conditions to come back again for them to flourish into life. As I was saying, there's a bunch of different types of vernal pools. There's the open canopy ones where there's not a whole lot of tree cover, you know, so it allows the sunlight to penetrate the water and for all the, that vegetation to grow. Then there's closed canopy vernal pools where there's so much tree cover around it, which is almost like this one here. And that doesn't allow a lot of sunlight to penetrate, so there's not much vegetation growing in there. But you'll still find the, the fairy shrimp and pollywogs and tadpoles and all that kind of stuff. Vernal pools are an entire ecosystem, so of course you have all those little niches and you know fragile factors contributing to the different types of pools. One of my favorite things about vernal pools is come late February, late March, I'll wait for a dark rainy night where it's about 45 degrees or warmer. I'll get in the car, I'll drive you know, in different parts of the county with the windows down. And I'll find these vernal pools sometimes on sound alone. I'll hear a huge chorus of wood frogs or spring peepers and I'll get real excited because I know that's where the vernal pool is. Um, there are some vernal pools that are quiet but they're still teeming with life, like hundreds of spotted salamanders breeding. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you come out and it's only for a very short period of time. I know at this particular vernal pool right here, um, in July, sometimes August, I'll have a huge population of gray tree frogs singing here. Okay, so even at the different times of the year, um, it'll be, there'll be a specialist creature or there'll be a huge course of something that's only found at that time of year. You know, uh, February, March are the spring peepers uh, and wood frogs. July, you'll have the gray tree frogs. You know, throughout the rest of the year, um, August and September, if it's not dried up, I'll have green frogs and bullfrogs, all that kind of stuff. It's really fun. So, another thing I love about vernal pools is often there'll be this really dark water that'll act as a mirror. Look at that, reflecting the, the landscape around it, like a perfect mirror sometimes. Sometimes a really cool spot to find snakes, sometimes turtles. Fox will come up here at night and drink some water and hunt maybe a few frogs, so will the raccoons. Skunks and possums sometimes come up here too. Now a lot of the creatures in the vernal pool, especially the tadpoles and pollywogs and stuff, they'll feed on the algae and they'll feed on the smaller stuff will feed on the detritus, the decaying leaves and plant matter that are in there. All these trees drop their leaves into here. It provides cover and food for the cyclops, the, the seed shrimp, the fairy shrimp, sometimes the tadpoles, and you'll have all sorts of invertebrates living in there that some of the bigger things feed on. So in a lot of ecosystems, this could be where a lot of the food chain starts. Tiny things being fed on slightly bigger things and so on and so forth until you even have foxes feeding on them. Maybe you might be in an area where there's bear or mountain lions that'll hunt the fox for food. A lot of time it starts right here in the vernal pools. Amazing habitats, really fun to explore. Okay guys, you hear that? That's the sound of a vernal pool in April in Pennsylvania. Now, as you can see, this is how I find vernal pools at night. You know, at the right time of year, they're just soaring with, with frogs and noise. Um, even in July, you might have the gray tree frogs at this very place. Right now, you're hearing spring peepers and some bullfrogs and some green frogs, and I just heard a wood frog. That one right there, that was, uh, that was a green frog. So, <laughs> there's another one. So, isn't that staggering? It's so loud. I actually had a, a sound meter. Uh, and I recorded it one night. I measured the sound. <laughs> it was 102 decibels. So, it's loud. 
Okay. You hear that? That marks a first for me. This is April, and that's a gray tree frog. I've never heard them this early in the season. Not around me. It's going to rain soon, which is why it's so loud tonight. This is amazing.